Okay, today we are going to talk about the surgical treatment and post-surgical rehabilitation for the acromioclavicular joint separation. Uh, this presentation was put together by Taylor Clark, Corey Peterson, and Kenny Rodriguez of the Texas State Physical Therapy Program. The acromioclavicular joint is a synovial articulation between the distal clavicle and acromion and is supported by several surrounding structures that can become compromised upon injury. Hyaline cartilage becomes fibrocartilage on the acromial insertion around 17 years old and the same for the acromion except at 24 years old. An acromioclavicular joint separation is commonly seen in sporting injuries such as ice hockey, rugby, football, and other contact sports. The mechanism of injury is usually seen as falling on an outstretched hand in humeral abduction or humeral adduction. Von Tempo et al.'s article in 2010 stated that uh, acromioclavicular joint separations are the third most common injuries in D1 college hockey teams and are also seen as 40% of injuries in, that, in NFL quarterbacks. Pain is experienced in the anterior and superior shoulder. There is 5 to 8 degrees of movement in the AC joint, so compression here can compromise vasculature and may result in deltotrapezial injury. Complications are listed below, so take a, min a minute to review the following. Six grades are assigned to the severity of an acromioclavicular joint separation. Grades 1 through 3 are typically managed conservatively, and grades 4 through 6 are typically managed via surgical intervention. Further imaging for grading the severity of an ACJ separation is typically best seen in the Zonka view, which was seen on our title slide. And the uh, acromioclavicular joint space does decrease with age and should be noted upon imaging. The following tests below are typically seen to be clinical indicators for ACJ pathology. So take a moment to review these tests under the clinical findings. This slide is a great depiction as to what the six grades for ACJ separation look like. Grade 1 is a mild sprain of an AC ligament where the joint remains intact with no disruption to the AC or CC ligaments. The AC ligament becomes disrupted in grade 2 while the CC ligament is still intact. The clav clavicle becomes unstable at this grade and is completely displaced at the distal clavicle. At the distal end. Grade 3, the AC and CC ligaments are disrupted. A grade 4 shows a complete dislocation of the AC joint. A grade 5 and 6, they differ in, surround, in the surrounding tissue based on the severity of the dislocation. One may see a concomitant uh, upper rib fra fracture or a brachial plexus injury upon dislocation as well. So before we begin our discussion of surgical interventions, I would like to consider an algorithm from Bon Tempo et al. to assist in clinical decision making. Consider first if your patient's an athlete. If yes, consider intra-articular injections and return to sport. If not, enter functional rehabilitation for a given time frame. Here it says three months. Following conservative management, consider if the patient has residual pain, loss of function, or an inability to perform at a previous level of activity. In the absence of functional deficiencies, then recommend return to full activity, and if not, then consider surgical interventions. Surgical, surgical interventions are indicated for AC joint separation grades 4 through 6 and those injuries that do not respond to conservative treatment. Of note, surgical interventions can be indicated for a grade 3 AC joint injury after failure of conservative treatment, but a consensus has yet to be reached in the literature. Per a 2012 systematic review by Epstein et al., there are two broad surgical categories. The first includes fixation across the AC joint or the CC joint, and then the second type of procedures are those uh, that attempt to augment or reconstruct the AC or CC ligament. While this is not an all-inclusive list of surgical options, it does provide you with an idea of the variety of surgical techniques currently used. The modified Weaver-Dunn procedure, which you can see highlighted, is important in, the, in that it's the most commonly one of the most commonly used procedures. It entails the stabilization of the clavicle to the coracoid during ligament healing with preservation of the AC joint, thereby reducing the risk of symptomatic arthritis. However, the uh, uh, coracoacromial ligament 
is sacrificed in the procedure, and this is significant because it may, may predispose the patient to anterior superior instability. Contraindications for surgical interventions include patients who cannot comply with post-operative restrictions and rehabilitation, as well as those patients with concomitant severe life-threatening injuries that prevent such a surgical intervention. Again, a list that, while not all-inclusive, provides you with some food for thought when managing uh, patients post-operatively. Of note here is the potential for AC joint arthritis, which occurs more frequently when the distal end of the clavicle is not resected and or with fixation of the AC joint. Here we consider the results of early versus delayed surgical intervention as revealed by Rolf and colleagues. This study included 49 total patients, 29 early repair candidates, and 20 delayed repair candidates. And here's a graphical representation of the outcomes assessed. Of particular importance is that 20 out of 29 patients in the early repair group that reported good or excellent satisfaction as compared to 9 of the 20 in the delayed repair group. The, a second significant outcome measure here was the constant Murley shoulder outcome score in which the early repair group reported an average score of 87 versus the delayed which reported an average of 78. As far as grade 1 through 3 injuries, conservative management is considered best practice. I think it's important for us to include this read article in our presentation as it was just published in August of 2012 and reviewed all the current literature out there to come up with best practice guidelines and an algorithm for treating these types of injuries. I would encourage you to find the citation on our reference page and take a look at the best practice guidelines they came up with. Though it's still awaiting validation, it may be a good place to start when treating these types of injuries. I also included a case report on the non-operative care of a grade 3 by Rob et al. that included chiropractic management and had excellent outcomes at 1, 3, 5, 7 year and 10 year follow ups. So I would also t suggest taking a look at that to view the exact treatment pro protocol they used. As indicated previously, uh, grades 4 and 6 separations, 4 through 6, will require surgical treatment then physical therapy to return these patients to their sport or previous level of functioning. The literature suggested that initial post-op rehab consists of range of motion activities for the uninvolved joints of the upper extremity and immobilization using a sling of some sort for about six weeks. Uh, basically in the following days after surgery you're going to want to move into passive and active assisted range of motion. It's important to understand that there are range of motion limitations imposed by the arthrokinematics of the clavicle on the acromion. So flexion and abduction should be limited to 90 degrees, external rotation to 30, and internal rotation limited to the chest wall for 6 to 8 weeks or until appropriate healing via the orthopod. After the sling comes off that 6th week, you can then work on full range of motion and supine as the scapula needs to be supported by the treatment table so no stress is actually put on a graft as would be in a gravity influenced upright position and then incorporate some isometrics and scapular strengthening. Week 8 to 12, you can go ahead and start weight training. Around week 9, treatment can become more functional and progressive, as well as target some of those components that initially couldn't be due to precautions. Get those scap muscles back that atrophy during the weeks of immobilization, address the tight capsule with grade 3 mobs, lower grades are also effective in pain reduction earlier in the progression, and work through the range of motion strengthening that rotator cuff. Resources agree that at least three months should pass before any heavy lifting or other activity resulting in a downward traction on the upper extremity or any strenuous use uh, or athletic activity. At this time, given the patient has met criteria for full, pain-free, active range of motion and adequate healing, you may then proceed with uh, non-contact athletic activities. At about 9 months, peak strength should be obtained, and at that time the patient can return to full athletic participation. So for our clinical bottom line, given current evidence, grades 1 through 3 AC joint separations are best treated conservatively, and we may expect to see validation studies for the best practice treatment guidelines by Reed. When surgery is necessary, there are a variety of surgical options, each with their own set of potential complications. However, outcomes can prove to be successful when following a post-operative protocol specific to the tre uh, surgical treatment provided and the patient's individual factors.
Here are our references. Hope you enjoyed our uh, our presentation. Uh, have a good day.